Hey gang, it's the Bad Avenger. Uh, this video is um, a little different than what I normally would do. Um, this is dealing with uh, the collectors that um, are kind of like long-term collectors. Uh, the ones who aren't looking for um, books that uh, will give them a quick return. These are books that um, have characters or incidents or um, appearances uh, that happen that and I think in the long run will benefit anyone if they ever have these books. Um, these are the ones, uh, books that through time they'll gain uh, popularity and, and probably some value. Um, starting with uh, Flash um, Future Zen One Shot Number One, and the reason for that is obvious. Um, is Kid Flash of the um, New 52. Makes his, uh, um, not his introduction here, but as far as his powers and a cameo appearance of him in his costume is in this book right here. And I'm showing you these books that are pretty recent. Uh, this, set, this first set of books, they're pretty recent, so they're pretty much kind of still in a uh, dollar bins or if not dollar bins and secondary uh bins at your local combo shop that you can get them pretty reasonable and i feel if you get them now and sit on them give it some time these books will eventually become pretty valuable the next book up is batman detective comics number 43 it's the first appearance of this uh group of villains called um I can't, I'm not very good at um, uh, Spanish, but I'll give it a shot. La Morte, uh, La Morta, uh, this is their first appearance in um, Batman Continuity. Daredevil number 25. This character here is called Akari, or known as the Fury. He has all the powers of Daredevil, except he isn't blind. And he wears the um, old yellow uh, version of the Daredevil costume. Another book, Batman number 28, if you can find it. This book um, was... Uh, hot for for a minute but it has long-term value because it's the first appearance of uh, bluebird um and it, um and she's shown up quite a bit in batman in fact she's still around but they really haven't done much with her since they've been in rebirth batman number 21 is the first appearance of duke thomas who becomes lark in um batman These two books are very recent. Teen Titans 1, Teen Titans 2. This has the first cameo appearance of the Demon's Fist. This has the full appearance of the Demon's Fist. Also, the leader of the Demon's Fist, Mara. Mari is um cousin of Robin and also the granddaughter like of uh, like Robin is of, of Rachel Gould. And I'm quite sure she'll become quite an, an antagonist for Robin and the Titans, or even for Robin and the Super Sons or whatever. She's um, going to be quite a character. This Harlequin number 26 is the first appearance of Red Tool as a knockoff of Deadpool, but a lot of fans have taken a uh, shine to him. And I think DC has brought it. He's been, been around quite a bit with um, Harley Quinn and he's starting to gain a um, fan base of his own. If you can get that book, that's another book that's worth getting. Also this book here. Harley Quinn number 30, this is the last book of the um, New 52 Harley before the rebirth. And the Amanda Connor cover is, is pretty smart. I think it's a nice cover. Um, it's really nice to have.
Green Lantern 41 and Green Lantern 40. Okay. Both these two books have significance of, of um, Hal Jordan becoming more or less a renegade. He doesn't have his ring anymore, and he's using Krona's um, power battery and arm um, gauntlet as his power source. Um, all of that has changed now since the rebirth, but this is a significant change for Hal Jordan, and it's a nice book to have in your collection. I told you this book one time before, and I'll toot it again. I even took this issue... 21 over the Scooby-Doo team up in 12, which is the first actual time Harley Quinn was in Scooby-Doo. This one, I think, has more prominence because it has Joker, it has Batman, Robin, it has a whole gamut in this book. And it's still, I mean, you can still find this one on the stands. Another Scooby-Doo team up is number 19 with Zatanna. Zatanna is also another hot character. She's been around for quite a long time, but she's now coming into her own. And a lot of people are, are finding a fan base with her, especially because of the Adam Hughes covers in her own book. But as far as a character, she's a strong female character that is finally, like Power Girl, getting, getting their due. Spider-Man Deadpool number eight and number nine. First appearance, uh, cameo and first appearance of Itsy Bitsy, another character to be looking out for in the Marvel Universe. I said this before. Um, she's a female that's been in dubbed with um, both Deadpool and Spider-Man's um, genes. And she's like, um, uh, she's not really a villain, but she's more of a, a basically a pest for right now. You don't know which way she's going to go in the Marvel Universe. But I'll be on the lookout for her nonetheless. This just came out. And the reason I put this book in here, Superman number 17, because this is the first solo story for Jonathan Kent. And it's a very good story. Um, just for that reason alone, I picked this book. Now we're getting into something that when I made my first video, I squalled and hollered about is the Super Sons. This is um, the actual, uh, I would say the first time that they went out on, like um, had to work together um, in this book here, um, Superman number 11. But this book, like I said, I told you this book, this book is now pretty much valuable. And if you can get the variant cover with the 399 cover prices through the roof, but uh, I talked about this book way back when, and so far so good, the book is jumping in value. And it's pretty new, it's just um, harder to find now because a lot of people have jumped on it. And I think it's currently running between 10 and $15 a copy. Now this book is a little more iffy. It's really the first um, meeting of Wally West Flash and Superman. Both of these two characters are the only two characters that weren't altered in the new Rebirth universe, and they have a direct connection to the old universe. And they finally meet up, and Superman tells him that he remembers him from when things were from before. And Wally actually thought he was the only one who um, was, wasn't changed because of what happened in Rebirth. I would advise holding on to that book too. Batgirl, number 42. Livewire. Okay, and the reason I said that because Livewire is another character that's coming into her own. And her appearances aren't that common. And this is her redesigned, first redesigned um, look um, since um, she came into the um, DC Universe. Action Comics number 52. The first meeting of old Superman and um, 
New 52 Superman. This book doesn't need no explanation. All new Wolverine 1, due to the fact that this is X-23 in her own book, picking up the mantle of Wolverine, due to the fact of the Logan movie being a success and the fact that X-23 stole the, stole the show. I would advise anybody not only just to pick up that book, but the entire line. Batman number 41. This book is the first appearance of the James Gordon era as Batman. Even though it is now is in rebirth, uh, we'll go down that he has because he has at one time been Batman. This book shows him in the Batman armor. And I guarantee you this book will be worth some money in the long run. Batman 51, The End of an Era. This is the last book in the New 52 continuity of stories for Batman before it switched over to Rebirth. This was a great run by um, Snyder and Capullo. The entire run itself will be worth some money in the long run. But like I said, it's the last, very last book and normally first and last issues Rise in value. I've talked about this book before. Amazing Spider-Man number 15. It's the Alex Ross version of the um, Mary Jane as Iron Spider. It's the first appearance of Mary Jane as um, the Iron Spider. And it's not to say that she may never pick the mantle up again. Knowing Marvel, I'm quite sure she will. Because she's a, a character that's too good to let go. Um, the J. Scott Campbell cover is worth a lot more. But I think the Alex Ross cover is ten times better looking. You know, uh, he gives a more realistic bent to it. Where um, Scott Campbell's version is more of the um, good girl type art. That is currently um, the hot commodity that's going around the days in um, comic book covers. Deadpool number six, introducing Deadpool's daughter, Deadpool 2099. Batman Detective Comics number, um, well, this is the one shot, I'm sorry, um, starring Anarchy. And it's been toted that Anarchy is the son of the Joker. It hasn't been proven or been really talked about more ever since. But that's what they were hinting, hinting to with this book. And subsequently, this book had um, um, a spike in the value. I don't know if it's still maintaining a value or if it has um, cooled off. But I still would advise in the long run for you to hold on to this book. New 52, Future's End number 46 and number 47. 46 is the death of Terry McGinnis as Batman Beyond. And 47 is beginning era when Tim Drake is snatched from his time period and becomes a new Batman Beyond for a time. In the um, new Batman Beyond universe, but now things have changed and McGinnis is currently back as... Um, Batman Beyond. This book, I didn't even know it, but another Convergence book that's jumping up in value. Harley Quinn number one with the Poison Ivy and Catwoman on the cover with her. I guess because of the um, heat going on with the Gotham Sirens movie that this book has jumped up in value. I think it's currently going at $15. You can find this in the dollar bin. If you are quick enough, you can still get it. I don't think a lot of dealers are really paying attention to this book. Um, if you can find it, stock up on it. It's worth it. This book was a sleeper. A lot of people didn't get it. I think a lot of people were turned off by the $10 price tag. But this book also 
as um, one of the early stories of the Super Sons in it together. And it's now a sought after comic book. Um, if it's hard to find, um, it's relatively gone. Um, if you can find it, I would grab it and put it away. All right, this next set of books are books that I've um, just dug out of my bin just to show that maybe you might, if you got them, you can get them. If not, you know, um, they're worth getting. This was a line, they were called Wednesday Comics that DC had put out a couple years ago, 2009. If you can get these in mint condition, I would grab them because this is something special that they, I don't think of, that they'll do it again. They reprinted all, the, it's, I think it was 12 of them um, as a whole, and they reprinted it as an oversized um, book in um, like newspaper form. And um, I only have up to issue number seven. But that's issue number seven with um, a variety of the DC heroes. And it's, um, I would advise anyone, if you can get them, grab them, put them in like I did. I put them in Mylar, number six, number five. Well, I got two number fives. I'm sorry. Number four. <clears throat> number three. Number two. And number one, if you can find them in relatively good condition, I would advise anyone get them, model them, put them away. They're like newspapers. When you open them up, they open up like a regular news Sunday newspaper or weekday newspaper. And it's just some um, superhero story done by some of the best in the business. This came out after Wizard and it's called Hero. Hero Illustrated. It lasted for a while, but it didn't last as long as Wizard. And it was basically um, almost a carbon copy of Wizard. But Wizard still had the better um, information and in, um, as far as um, telling about comics. Um, Wizard basically had, had the, um, it was like Marvel and DC. And at the time, Wizard was more like Marvel, but um, DC was more like um, Hero Illustrated. But it didn't last, I think they lasted uh, maybe two years before they pulled it. But this is the first issue of um, Hero Illustrated with Dr. Mirage on the front cover. These are some books that I, I had that I wanted to show. DC One Million. Number one, Amanda cover, Amanda Connor cover to um, Painkiller Jane. Number one, Army of Darkness. Number one, Wonder Girl. Number one. These are the Stan Lee books. I think this is um, the significance of this is I think this is the last set of books that Stanley ever basically wrote. Um, and funny thing, he did it for DC. It's called the Just Imagine Books. That's his version of Green Lantern. He looks like Dr. Manhattan. His version of Robin. What he would think if he did Catwoman. Batman. Some of these are real far out looking, like the Batman Aquaman and his version of the Flash. And the Justice League of America. I don't have um, Superman and I don't have, I think it's Wonder Woman. But if you can find them, it's. Um, I guess for historic purposes, something nice to have. I always pick these up when I see them. Uh, Amalgam Comics, a uh, combination of DC and Marvel. Uh, 
which I don't think you'll ever see again, but it's, it's a shame because this character had potential. Dark Hall, which was a combination of Wolverine and Batman. Um, I have the other version, hold on, which was more like the television cartoon of Batman and the Dark Knight Adventures. Um, it's the Dark Hall Adventures, which is another book that if I see it, I always pick it up. Now that true Lobo, or the, I call him real Lobo, is back. I'll show Lobo number one. Came back in, this book came out in 1990. Um, Electra number one. Mike Diodoto, Diodato, or um, issue. Nice cool cover. And because of what's going on with Logan the movie, I'll show you some covers to X23, number four. I got number two, two, two number two, and number one. But this number one is a reprint. It's the Marvel Greatest Comics version, number one. I do have the number one. I just didn't feel like going through trying to dig it out, out of these other books that I had. I got two copies of this. I found some more um, DC Universe books, which made me very happy. Uh, showcase number seven with the penguin front and center. Showcase number six with um, Huntress and Robin front and center. And this one I really like because it's got a um, Walt Simonson cover with Huntress on it. And she looks very menacing. Uh, this is number five of Showcase 94. I found this book. I saw this recently, and I can't remember whose video it was, and I apologize for that. But I saw this um, in his video, and I, I had to show that I have one, too. This is a beautiful Arthur Adams cover for Astonishing X-Men number 43 of The White Queen. Just just awesome cover by um, Arthur Adams. Um, Deadpool team-up. Uh, I always get a kick out of this version of the Punisher. I actually like Franken Castle. A lot of people hated it. I mean, poor poor um Punisher. He's been dead. He's been undead. He's been turned to Frankenstein. But to tell you the truth, Wolverine's been tearing up some characters. He did this to um Punisher. And he also um disfigured the thing for a while, cut him up in his face where he had to wear an iron helmet. Um uh this one though, um uh, I just really like this cover. I just wanted to show it. And the last book that I would show, this book has gained some steam. This is Batman Detective Comics number 831 with Harley Quinn on the cover. For a while, this book sat in the dollar bin. I mean, just sat. I mean, if you still look hard enough, you probably still can find it. But it's going for $15 and up. And basically, that's my haul. Um, like I said, while I got downtime, I'll be making some videos showing some of the stuff that I have. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. And, um, if you like it, like, uh, give me a like response. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I appreciate you stopping by and checking out what I have. It's Bad Avenger, and I'm out.